Hi Bobcats! In Chapter 4, we're going to take a look at how atoms bond to other atoms. Our objectives include connecting the structure of a substance to its properties, also looking at how Coulomb's law from physics informs bonding, and to introduce the two big categories of bonding, which are ionic and covalent bonding. Diamond and graphite are two substances with very different properties. Diamond is the strongest, hardest substance that we know, and graphite is very, very soft. It's so soft that if you take a piece of it and rub it across paper, it leaves a mark behind. You do this every time you use a pencil. The thing that these two substances have in common is that they are both made up of carbon. Diamond and graphite are pure forms of carbon, but they have tremendously different properties. So it can't be due to just the carbon atoms, since they both have only carbon atoms. Their properties are actually due to the way that the atoms are stuck to each other, or how these atoms are bonded to each other. In diamond, each carbon atom is surrounded by four other carbon atoms in a geometry known as a tetrahedron. Later on in this chapter, we'll see what tetrahedra are all about. In graphite, on the other hand, the atoms are organized into flat sheets, and within each sheet, there are six membered rings of carbon atoms that are side by side forming a honeycomb type structure. And then each sheet is very loosely connected to the next sheet, which is why um, the pencil leaves a mark on your paper as these sheets peel off um, when you rub your pencil across. So uh, diamond and graphite have the exact same composition, but very, very different properties. And the difference in properties is due to the bonding in the two elements. Bonding will be all about sharing or transferring electrons, and it's all based on how these charged particles, these electrons, interact with other charged particles, either other electrons or the nucleus of the atom. Um, the behavior of charged particles is described in physics by Coulomb's law, which is this equation. Um, the F stands for a force, K is a constant, the Qs stand for the charges on the two particles that are interacting, and the D stands for the distance between them. So if we just look at the mathematical form of this law, the big lessons for bonding um, come from the two Qs in the top, so that just tells us um, that opposite charges um, attract each other and the same charges repel. And then from that d squared term in the bottom, which tells us that um, when two charged particles get to be very close to each other and have a small d, then the force of interaction between them gets to be very large. And as that d gets to be a big number, um, since d squared's in the denominator, the force between the particles gets to be very small. So basically that's saying when charged particles are close, they interact very strongly. When charged particles are far apart, their interaction is very uh, small all the way down to negligible. Chemical bonding in general is governed by the octet rule. If we are talking about main group elements, uh, they will completely fill their S and P subshell, which gives us a total of eight electrons. Um, so atoms will either gain, lose, or share electrons with other atoms until they have eight valence electrons. This results in a very low energy favorable arrangement of the electrons that looks very much like the arrangement in a noble gas. Um, the bonding continuum has two extremes. Um, in the diagram at the bottom of the screen on the far left, we're talking about pure covalent bonding where two atoms evenly share a pair of electrons and those electrons um, roam randomly about the two atoms. And on the far right, we have ionic bonding, which happens when one atom transfers one or more electrons to another atom. 
the atom that lost the electrons ends up with a positive charge, and the one that gained the electrons ends up with a negative charge. Now you have um, opposite charged particles known as ions, and the opposite charges attract holding them together. Now somewhere in the middle of these two extremes is what's known as polar covalent bonding. This is a case where the atoms share the electrons, but they share them unevenly. The electrons end up spending more time around one atom than they do around the other. And so we end up with not a full charge on each atom, but what we call a partial charge, which is indicated with that lowercase Greek letter delta. Here at the beginning of the chapter, I also want to point out that I'll be using the terms molecular and covalent interchangeably. Formally speaking, molecular refers to how the atoms are arranged on the particle level scale um, or the atomic level scale. Um, if the atoms group together to form a closed unit, which we call a molecule, then the compound is referred to as molecular. However, in the types of compounds that form molecules, you'll discover that we have covalent bonding. So um, when we use the term covalent, we really should be referring to the type of bonding present, um, but things that have covalent bonding have molecular form. So molecular and covalent tend to be used interchangeably. Our objectives for this chapter were to connect the atomic level structure of a substance to its properties. This has huge implications for um, developing new materials for specific applications. Um, we also saw from Coulomb's law that opposite charges attract, same charges repel, and uh, the closer two particles are, the more they interact, the farther apart, the less interaction they have, and also to introduce the idea of ionic and covalent bonding.